I'm Alexandria Hoffman, flutist with the Civic Orchestra of Chicago. As a fellow with the Civic Orchestra, part of my job involves engaging with the greater Chicago community through performances, creative projects, and education. As a native of Chicago, I care very deeply about using music as a way to be involved in the community. As musicians, most of our work happens behind the scenes. The concert is the final product, but it is actually only a small portion of what we do. It can often feel lonely, but it's also necessary to our success. In order to successfully practice, we must have specific goals, track our progress, eliminate distractions, and ultimately find what works for us. At the start of each practice session, I ask myself, what do I want to accomplish today? And I write it down. Materials for each of my practice sessions include a calendar to plan long-term goals, a notebook to write down specific things that I hear, my phone to record myself, and most importantly, a tuner and a metronome. In order to properly eliminate distractions, my phone is on airplane mode when I practice, and I specifically set aside a designated time during the day for practice that is non-negotiable. But most of all, do what works for you. The warm-up sets the tone for the entire day and for me is the most important part of my practice. I think about it as waking up my body and meeting myself wherever I'm at that day. If you treat practicing like an athlete treats working out, the same philosophies apply. You warm up, you push yourself to your goal for the day, and then you cool down. You make goals in order to improve and track your progress along the way. My warm-ups consist of two main categories, tone and technique. I begin with playing my long tones all the way up and down the chromatic scale like this. Etc., etc., and then I would go up the chromatic scale as well. Using the same exact exercise, I will work on intonation, vibrato, and dynamics. I will tackle each category individually. For example, I would play that same exercise again, only working on dynamic contrast. My technical warm-up begins with an exercise out of my favorite flute warm-up book by Tafnan Gaber, but any standard scale book works. I play all of my major and minor scales every single day, each day with a different articulation. I'll record my tempo each day and keep track of my progress. Then I will play arpeggios each day, followed by an interval exercise. Truthfully, my warm-up takes about a full hour, but yours may only be 10 minutes. Again, find what works for you. The important thing is to warm up your sound and your hands throughout the entire range of the instrument in order to feel 100% ready for your practice session. Music challenges us in many ways, but the reward is creating something beautiful. What you put into it, you will get out of it. But sometimes we hit a wall, and how we push through that wall is the difference between a breakdown versus a breakthrough. If I'm having a particularly difficult time with a passage, I break it down and ask myself, what am I specifically struggling with? Is it the tempo, the rhythm, the intonation? Identifying this helps to hone in on how to work on it. If we're taking tempo, for example, I slow down my metronome until I can play the passage perfectly, then slowly increase the tempo, never going past where I can play something perfectly in time. Another strategy is to experiment with alternate rhythms. Or alternate articulations. If I'm having trouble counting a rhythm, I might write in the counting, count it out loud, and then transfer that to my playing. If it's freezing, I might sing the passage out loud to explore how I want to play a particular phrase. In order to be efficient with my time, I use the Voice Memos app on my phone, which is still in airplane mode, to record myself while playing. I'll listen back immediately and write down what I did well and what can be improved upon. I'll work on these things and then I will play and record the excerpt again, taking notes for a second time. I'll repeat this process until I'm satisfied with the work I've done for that day. While physical strategies are important, mental strategies are important as well. The level of patience required for practicing an instrument is unique, but not impossible. 
Some days will be tougher than others. Some days you will need to push through. But if you keep moving forward, that's almost always when a breakthrough happens, so I encourage you to stay positive. I believe that a very important part of creativity in music is actively seeking out other forms of art. I listen to a lot of different genres of music, and whether it's Beethoven or Chance the Rapper, I try to recognize the beauty in their art and think about how they create music. I also go to art museums to appreciate visual art and think about how we as musicians can represent our music as clearly as a painter might represent ideas in their works. You can exude your creativity in small ways in how you deliver a phrase, but on a bigger scale, when I'm at my most creative, I fight to play and program works by people that I identify with. For example, playing music by women composers gives me a stronger sense of purpose and allows me to fully express myself. Music is a beautiful art form that teaches you everything from patience to humility to grit. But at the end of each day, if you do the work, the joy is endlessly rewarding. Thank you for watching this video and be sure to check out the other practice tips videos and have fun practicing.